Welcome back to another chapter in the stories of resilience. I am so excited to have our conversation with our guest today. She is Dr. Jacqueline Sherman, and I want to give you a few moments to introduce yourself, tell the people who you are, where they could find you if they want to learn more about you, and then we'll jump right in. Thank you, Dr. D. First of all, I'm so excited and happy to be here. I just love this work that you're doing. So thank you for inviting me to be a guest. Mm -hmm. um, so again, my name is Dr. Jacqueline Sherman. I am a licensed clinical psychologist and I work with veterans. Um, so I work for a VA medical center. My specialty is in PTSD and substance use disorders. Um, so I actually work for a residential program within the VA, helping veterans that are struggling with that dual diagnosis with substance use and trauma. Um, um, and so I have a very resilient um, population that, that I work with oh. on a daily basis. Um, I have lots of interests, one of them being race-based stress and trauma. So that's something that I've um, really cultivated, um, especially you know, given some of the recent um, just human rights issues that have come up. Um, that has been some really important work that I've done. I'm also very interested in sexual health. Um, so that's me professionally. And um, I'm a military spouse. Um, we have friend. that in common. <laughs> yeah, we have that in common. We were just speaking about that. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about me. You can find me um, on Instagram at D-R-J-A-C. Q-H-A-Y, so Dr. Jack Hay, um, that's where you can find me on Instagram, and I would love to connect with you all there. Good, yes, please check out her account. She posts amazing content, and it was actually one of her recent posts that inspired me to welcome her on the Stories of Resilience today. Um, so I'm gonna take a moment and share the caption because I believe it was very healing and then um, allow that to kind of lay the groundwork for our conversation today. She wrote, a year ago today, we found out we were pregnant. We were elated. God has finally answered our prayers. We had been trying for months and were scheduled to see a fertility specialist in two days. Anyone who knows me well knows my determination and I wasn't taking no for an answer. Then without even trying, it happened. 13 days later, I had a miscarriage. My heart was completely shattered. My husband tried his best to support me, but his optimistic nature was not helpful during the initial phase of my grieving journey. I couldn't feel hopeful and wasn't excited to try again. We didn't tell many people. I couldn't talk or think about it without crying. I just wanted to binge eat popcorn and watch Netflix. I wanted to be left alone. I noticed many signs of depression. Thankfully, we were in couples therapy which already, which helped us be intentional about processing this loss together. We needed a dedicated place to heal and get our heads and hearts aligned. Yesterday, we were asked to model for this gorgeous style shoot. It was so timely. Last, the last year has been tough on us. We've built deep vulnerability and unwavering understanding. I truly enjoyed our love and growth being captured yesterday. And I'm sharing so candidly because God whispered to me, telling me I should. I want to help normalize that depression often follows a miscarriage. You are not weak, crazy, tripping, or falling apart. You are human and you're not alone. I want to highlight that therapy is cool and a great tool to navigate difficult moments in relationship. It's the catalyst to a healthy healing process. Therapists need therapy too. Thank you to everyone that made this shoot possible. We are forever grateful. Yeah, I'm going to take a breath on that one. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that, Dr. D. Yeah. What spoke to me um, so powerfully from what you shared was you um, normalizing the cyclical pattern of, of healing, of growth, um, we experience things and we need time to allow ourselves to sit in the sadness, to sit in the grief, to sit in the shock and not um, kind of glamorize it. I noticed a lot of times we, um, in my work too, and working with couples, 
sometimes they feel like, okay, we just got to dust this off our shoulders and then try again. And then, you know, like get back up on the horse. And there's a lot of um, anxiety and pressure that's built to move forward so quickly or at a fast rate. And what I respect and honor so much about you is how you honored that each part of this journey has a purpose. And you normalize that it is okay to take that time, breathe, pause, experience the depth of what it is that's happening, and then use that to inform what the next steps will be. And then you showed the whole journey. And on Instagram, a lot of times we just show the highlights. We show the pictures of us looking cute on the beach without sharing the background story of how we got here. And that's what I respect about you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I, I really, really appreciate um, that and, and kind of just how you really summarized um, why it is so important to share um, and why it's also important to be still in the sadness. Yeah. Um, right. And being able to honor that emotion. And, um, you know, I spoke about my husband and his optimism because it was one of the things that it, it's one of the things that is such a a wonderful strength about him, um, but I just couldn't be in a happy place. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, a part of the healing process is being able just to recognize when, you know, emotions are really, really difficult. And like you mentioned, having patience. Um, so there were a lot of things that, you know, I did during that time to protect myself. One of those was getting off of Instagram. I was just tired of seeing people with their pregnancy announcements and mm -hmm. gender reveals and, and birth of their children. And so, um, so yeah, I, I am thankful for where I am now. And it was a re really, really difficult moment. Um, and being in therapy was very helpful in that process. Yeah. So I, I want to definitely in our conversation jump in in the ways that your uh, resilience was strengthened. And, and first, I'd like you to share in the context of this and then any other examples, when is it that you realize like, hold up, I'm, I'm pretty resilient? Yeah, so I, I, I would want to I want to say that I feel like the first time I recognized my resilience was in graduate school. Um, okay. So when I was I went I got my master's, then I went back to get my PhD in 2013, um, and I went to school in Norfolk, Virginia. So I moved to Virginia Beach, didn't know anyone there, was super excited about the opportunity, and my first year was literally my most difficult year. Um, one, I was just away from family and friends and didn't know anyone. I had a small cohort of five other people, um, but it was really, really hard, and I'm sure that you can identify kind yeah. of what that what that transition looks like. Um, so it was hard, but I did feel confident. I felt confident. I knew I had thought really carefully about what I wanted my life to look like, and this was it. Um, and so that first year, um, and I had always thought and felt like I was good at academics until I got to my PhD program. And I struggled that first year, um, specifically with statistics, um, because that is not my area of strength. And um, some people may not know, but like in, 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 in higher level education, you know, if you're not getting A's and B's, like getting a C in a course is failing, like you have to retake. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, so, <laughs> and there's not many opportunities. Like you have a midterm, you have a final, maybe a couple of other things that really aren't weighted that high. Right. Um, so, you know, it, it's really important to do well. Um, and so when I started, you know, taking statistics, I was really, really struggling. Um, so much so that I was starting to have panic attacks. Um, and it was really, really difficult. And there was a moment where I was going to leave um, graduate school. Um, wow. After I got my midterm, I studied harder than I had ever studied for anything up until that point, like waking up mm -hmm. two, three o'clock in the morning, not having good self-care in hindsight, but right. you know, I studied, I did everything that I was supposed to do. And I ended up failing my, my midterm in statistics. And for me, I just felt like I wasn't going to be able to recover from it. And I actually mm -hmm. ended up experiencing a panic attack um, when I went to pick up my laundry from the dry cleaners and a complete stranger took me to the ER. Wow. Yes, it was that oh bad. My, goodness. My, my body was literally reacting to me being under too much stress and putting oh so my much goodness. on myself to, you know, do it perfectly. 
So were you were you aware during this time, like I'm under stress, or was it it wasn't until like your body was telling you, like, homegirl, slow down, that you got the message? So I was aware, um, but I wasn't aware of how bad I had let it become. Okay. Um, until my body literally was there was all of these signals going off that like you need to do something. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, I really reached out for support. Um, I remember calling my mom and I'm like, I'm in the car. Like I couldn't even really talk to her. And so I was on speaker and, and trying to explain to her what happened. But afterwards, once she got the full details, she literally sat me down and was like, um, I'm really concerned. And I want you to know that we are so proud of you. Um, you have done so much. And I'm, I get teary eyed when I think about her. You have done so much in your life already. It's okay if you don't complete this. So she gave me permission wow. to walk away if it was too much. And that- That's so liberating. Yeah, that, that was extremely liberate, liberating and um, really, really helped me. It, it's what I needed. I needed that permission for it to be okay if I didn't push through or not, know that I still have my family support. Mm -hmm. um, and I continue to use her in moments where things got extremely difficult, but I really was considering um, leaving the program and by practicing better self-care and um, really connecting and asking for help, um, mm -hmm. I got to a place where I was able to better manage things. Okay. Okay, so I want to um, pull out some of the strategies that you use for, for the people listening. So they could like, okay, how can I, if I can identify with this, what are some things I could do to pull me to the other side? And one of the things you mentioned was um, reaching out to your support system. And so that, and asking for help too. Were you going to add something? Well, no, I was just going to just definitely agree. Community is so helpful when it comes to building resilience. Yes. And I think that, man, we oftentimes just feel like we have to struggle in silence. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that when, and, and that was a piece of why I put out, um, you know, that post on Instagram. I didn't want people to feel like they were alone. Yes. Yeah, and so community to me is everything when it comes to building resilience, asking for help, that's how I got through graduate school. After I had that panic attack, I let my cohort know and they were like, hey, we can help you. Like, mm -hmm. let's do, let, like, let's study together. Like, what are you having issues with? And like, they, they really did. We, we came yeah. together um, in the name of support. Yeah. Um, so leaning on others is a huge, huge piece. Absolutely. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know, I, I don't think I can pinpoint, pinpoint exactly where, but I think many of us can um, relate to somehow having this message instilled that we need to figure it out on our own, mm -hmm. that we need to do it by ourselves, and that reaching out to other people is in some way um, cheating or something like that. Like, you're supposed to be able to say, like, yeah, I pulled myself up by my bootstraps all by myself. Like, I am self-made. I did that. <laughs> when in reality, like, we are social creatures. We are social beings. And our strength truly comes in our collective power. So our ability to be like, okay, this isn't my strength, but our connection we complement each other because you're really good at those statistics, but I'm really good at writing these papers or I'm really good with this. And then we can learn from each other and we could lift each other up. And then we can even love each other in ways that are healing. So it sounds like with mom, like her loving you with those words of affirmation, her speaking that life into you and reminding you and giving you a different message than the narrative that was playing in your mind all day like allowed you to break out of that mindset and start living and walking your days out in another one. And that, that had a huge um, shift as well. And, um, and then acceptance, I think, um, played a role in, in what you were sharing as well, just allowing yourself to be at peace with things as they were and figuring out how can I manage this? Because once we accept what is, then we could be more effective in fixing it or changing it or whatever we need to do. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. Um, that radical acceptance piece is key, right? Because it's like, I don't have to like what's happening. I don't have to right. enjoy it, right. but it's still happening. And so how can I lean in um, and 
just be, be yeah. and, and, and trust the process. That's another thing that has been extremely helpful for me when it comes to challenges that I've faced, um, recognizing that I've literally survived 100% of my worst days. This is something that I use with clients often. I like that. I love that so much. Wait, say it again, say it again. <laughs> we have all conquered and lived through and survived 100% of our worst days, right? Yes. So there's literally resilience built within us um, mm -hmm. that we can tap into as a resource. And I also think that there's a responsibility that we all have as humans to show up and be resilient so then we can empower others. Yes. Um, so I, I think that that's really important. We, we all go through things and we all have challenges and, um, and when we reflect back on how we got through, it's so, so important. Um, yeah. Another thing is being able to lean into appreciation for our challenges. Right? Because, yeah, because I feel like oftentimes, um, and, and sometimes even in psychology, it's like, what are your strengths, right? What are your strengths? And you can kind of like list off a, a strengths. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that it's also really important to recognize that our challenges are just as important and teach us just as much about ourselves than our strengths do, as our strengths yeah. do. Yeah. Um, so sometimes I think that we forget that. Like, for example, I think about my mother who, you know, um, in kind of tying it back to you know, my experience of a miscarriage, she had three miscarriages before she, you know, had her first child, which was me. Um, and Were you aware of that? Yes, yes, okay. I was aware of that. She was very open um, with me about that. So she had three miscarriages. Um, she had three pregnancies that were all high risk. Um, and her last pregnancy, she ended up losing a child. Um, so my brother was a twin. <laughs> The twin didn't make it um, oh. and there were just a lot of challenges that she had regarding um, pregnancy right um, and so she then became a sense of support um, for me and you know when I think about you know the challenges that she has faced um, it really really helped me to kind of just appreciate the moment and recognize that you know that made her a stronger person um, and will continue to make me a stronger person. I love that. I love that. So one, um, I was wondering if you could give us an example, the, the piece you were sharing about our challenges teach us just as much about ourselves. So when, when you're, um, either of the examples you shared, what, what was something that you learned about yourself through those challenges? Yeah, so, in thinking about um, my, my challenge in graduate school, mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that it showed that it really, really taught me was um, to not give up, um, to you know, not doubt myself because there was a lot of imposter syndrome and perfectionism that was flaring up right mm -hmm. there. Um, and to, to lean into my support. Yeah. Lean into my support. I also was able to learn um, that it is really, really important to reach out to people who have been there. Yes. And I think sometimes we forget to do that. Um, yeah. right? You and I were even, we were speaking, um, I, I hope that it's okay that I share yes, this. Yes, go ahead, yes. In previous uh, podcasts, but you're a military spouse. I was sharing that my, my husband's gonna be leaving in four days um, to be stationed in the Middle East. And, you know, we connected regarding mm -hmm. And you were able to share your experience of, hey, you know, I've been in a similar situation. This is how I coped. Right. I am very intentional on listening for how people cope regarding yes. situations that I've been through. Right. Um, we all have something to offer one another. Um, and so that I feel like can really, really be helpful. And I think that no matter what we're going through, there's somebody that has experienced it. There's a community out there right. that, connection that can be made. And I think that sometimes just being willing and open to asking for help um, can really help us um, to get through it um, with a sense of community and support. Yes. Yeah, and, and validation of our experience as well, because sometimes we reach out for support with people who haven't had that experience or, or can't really relate. And then the 
the support, you know, it's coming out of a place of love, but sometimes <laughs> it just kind of fall flat. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yes, like, and, and, and I know that they mean well, but I've had so many people that are like, well, why don't you just go with him? And I'm like, mm, you don't really get it. Um, I could, yes, but I'm choosing not to um, because of X, Y, and Z. And I think that we even connected on that one. Yeah, way. yeah. You, you being a therapist and understanding like what it means and how there's restrictions regarding where you are and how you practice. Yeah. Um, and so I do think that some people do are intentional, um, and sometimes it can fall flat. So really yeah. kind of reaching out and sometimes it may not even come in the form of a person. Sometimes it can come in the form of a resource. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like recently, um, I gave my sister a book on grief, um, that I had come across and it was written by someone whose mother had passed away. Now mm -hmm. my sister's mother passed away a year ago. Mm -hmm. And it's really difficult for her. And so even she may not have someone in her immediate circle that understands her circumstances. Right. But even being able to reach out to a resource can be really Yeah, helpful. yeah. Books have transformed many lives and mm -hmm. minds and then using those as resources as well, support groups and um, and then sometimes even like media, you know, like some, some um, podcasts have that impact movies have that impact sometimes songs have known to have that impact on other people's life it's a lot of times about us being like oh i'm not the only one oh this has been done before this has been conquered or overcome or people have been able to heal from this before i know it's possible and then it allows us kind of that that spark to get the the momentum going thank you for sharing that so much absolutely well, You're welcome were there any other key moments you um, wanted to share before we jumped into um, how it, it, it was that you strengthened your re resilience? Um, I, can't, I can't think of any other um, okay. key moments at this time. Okay, okay. So when taking into consideration the, the more um, recent events with the learning how to heal as a couple, with the miscarriage and then also the overcoming the experience of graduate school, which can be very challenging. Um, when you think about those times, we already touched on some of the things that you did to strengthen your resilience. What, what would you add to that? So I think that it was really important for me to try as much as I could to stay calm. Okay. Um, so and for me, particularly, my anxiety can really get the best of me. I know that about myself. Um, and so I have to practice that regularly, um, okay. whether that be, you know, waking up in the morning and doing a, you know, brief meditation okay. um, or, you know, when something feels extremely difficult, being able to take, a, you know, a, a couple of breaths before I move into making any type of action. Um, so remaining calm and remaining aware of my emotions. Mm. You know, our emotions are data. They give us information. And we sometimes can ignore them <laughs> until yes. we're in a dry cleaners and we're having a panic attack. Right, right. So right. from my own experience that it's really important to pay attention to the whispers because mental health, it shows up differently than like physical health, right? Mm -hmm. like leg is broken. You can see that. You know, right. you see that people can see that, um, but with mental health, sometimes it can be, you know, it, it can, you can experience it in silence. And so right. um, I just try to be really mindful about my emotions, recognizing where I am, setting boundaries around that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, again, like I mentioned, you know, remaining calm. Those are some okay. of the things that I have found to be extremely helpful. Okay. So I want to break down um, two of those because um, the meditation, I think most people are somewhat familiar with that. And that's like a simple Google search away. You'll find all kinds of videos and, and instructions and there's some guided meditation and things like that. I love how you um, even made the picture so clear with like the taking a few breaths, like before you decide to say something and you did a beautiful illustration of that in our conversation today when we started off you're like okay I'm gonna take a breath on that 
and that allowed you to to calm not only your mind but also like your your physiological responses so that you could step back into our conversation with more intention so i love that technique too like before you say anything or before you jump into action just take a few breaths pause so that you could step into it with with more intention so i love how specific that was um i i'm like so excited to hear you say emotions are data. I haven't used those words before. I do use like emotional intelligence a lot, um, but I love even like how plain that is. Like absolutely emotions are data. Why would we ignore data? Like it is how we process the data and how we put that data to use is what determines whether that data is helpful or not. So I want you to share a little bit about um, how you learn to use your emotions as data. Yeah, thank you. So I think that for me, um, especially I think after the graduate school situation that I shared, mm -hmm. um, I recognized that I was I had been ignoring a lot of my emotions just to keep going, right? Yeah. Because that I'm a very achievement oriented person, um, and so I think that I put that value in 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 certain moments um, on top of. I put it in front of my own self-care. Mm. Um, so I really tried to do things differently and be a whole lot more intentional about paying attention to my emotions. Um, so one of the things that I feel like is a strategy that can be really, really helpful and something that I've become, um, that I've learned over time and gotten a lot better at and help, help clients with is just naming what it is that we're feeling. Yeah. And we don't sometimes even really take a moment to even recognize like is it yeah, that I'm yeah. feeling jealousy is it that I'm feeling insecure is it that I'm feeling afraid like being able to name that emotion can sometimes be that starting place right absolutely so can we name it can we sit with it can we accept that this is what we're feeling right now and that it's not going to last forever because motion emotions go up and down mm -hmm. um and so how can I show up the best that I can? How can I be the best version of myself given this emotion? Right. right. And so sometimes that may be, I'm going to take a mental health day and, you know, not do anything. And mm -hmm. other times it may look different. Um, I'm right. going to call a friend. I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to, you know, go watch the sunset, um, whatever it is for the person. But just being able to recognize that your emotions are important. They all have value good, bad, or indifferent, however you kind of want to, you know, name them or label them. Um, mm -hmm. but that has become extremely important to me in, 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 you know, my overall journey in processing and working through emotions. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. What about the setting boundaries piece? What are some like tools or strategies you can share with the people? Yes. So another deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> As, as a therapist, and, and um, you, you may also um, agree with this um, in some form or fashion, but I think that sometimes um, because, you know, we tend to listen with a third ear, um, are extremely empathetic, are understanding, people flock to that, mm -hmm. right? And so for me, what I've had to recognize is that there's just some days that I'm not having the best day, that I may be feeling incredibly sad or incredibly anxious, um, and I have made it a priority um, to set boundaries around that. So for example, um, if there's something that's pulling me that is going to empty my tank, mm -hmm. I have learned to say, I'm not going to do that even if it's going to potentially make someone upset, which is something that used to be really difficult for me. Um, and so I've just become a whole lot more, um, I've, I've had a whole lot more great conversations around like, hey, this is, this is where I'm at right now and being really honest about that and then setting boundaries around that process. Mm -hmm. um, I recently got licensed um, as a psychologist. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I took my license exam, licensing exam during COVID, mm. um, which was such a stressful process. Uh, it was canceled several times, et cetera. It was, it was, it was tough. Um, but I set boundaries around what I was going to let into my mental space. Um, so for example, you know, I had to pull back and set some boundaries around some of my friendships. My friends understood 
but it was really important to me to be able to protect my time so I could reach my goal, to -hmm. protect my time so I could help manage my anxiety. Uh, And so setting boundaries, I think, for ourselves individually, as well as with those that we love and care about, um, and even professionally, um, is really, really important. And thinking about, you know, what we may need in any given moment regarding how we're feeling emotionally. Yeah, yeah. And to give that to us. Absolutely, absolutely. That needs peace. Because once we're able to identify the need, then we know what boundary needs to be put in place. So do we need a little bit more connection? If that's the case, then we reach out. Or have I been overly stimulated and I need a little bit of solitude? Then that lets you know, like, okay, I'm going to put the phone on silent. Or it's going to be like, yeah, I'm not going out with y'all tonight, but you can hit me up again next week or (laughs) something along those lines. But identifying what I need right now helps you be able to respond with um, more efficiency. Yes. Definitely. Okay. Okay. So um, why would you say it's important for us to develop this sense of, of resilience? Yeah, that is a really good question. And I feel that the best way I can answer that is, I think that I've spoken a lot today just about um, the importance of connection right? Mm -hmm. That, that's a really important value to me. And I think that we all have a responsibility, um, to work through our resilience in a way where we're able to share pieces of it, to inspire others. Yeah. Um, when I think about, you know, how I've been resilient in my life, I could always look back to someone else who I feel like inspired me, who went through what I went through. Mm -hmm. Um, And so continuing to be able to show up for one another um, is really, really important. Yes, that's beautiful. Who is it that you hope is inspired by you sharing these pieces of your resilience? Um, So I hope to help anyone who feels alone in their struggle. Um, We are never alone. Um, And so... I know there's moments in the past where I have felt that exact same way. Um, And so anyone feeling alone, that whatever they're going through, they are kind of struggling in isolation with it. Um, I wanna reach that person and let them know that there is opportunities for connection out there um, and encourage them that, um, encourage them to, when they are ready, the important piece, um, to reach out for help and support. Okay. Okay. And to wrap up our conversation today, I would like to ask you to fill in the blank. Resilience is? So really, I feel like the simplest version of resilience is a willingness to keep going. Mm-hmm. Um, I would think that resilience is also trusting the process. Um, getting resourceful, getting connected, uh, dancing with the fear, Mm. the fear of the unknown, right? Leaning into that um, as much as we can, doing it scared, um, being open to new possibilities and for things not looking how we thought they would, Mm -hmm. Uh, having self-compassion and um, adapting well to change. I love it. I love it. Thank you again so much. And please remind the people where they can find you if they want to learn more about you and your work. Yes, yes. Thank you. So again, my name is Dr. Jacqueline Sherman, and you can find me on Instagram. Um, Please connect with me. I've had so many people um, reach out recently regarding, you know, their own infertility issues and miscarriages, and it has been such a blessing to my life. So please connect with me, especially if you would like to share and get support. Um, So uh, my Instagram is at D-R-J-A-C-Q-H-A-Y. Okay. Thank you everyone for listening in and we'll see you again next time in the next chapter in the stories of the business. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. D. You're welcome.